Hi, Jen and class. Today I'm going to do my main forum post on Natasha Trethewey's poem, Flounder. And the two critical approaches that I chose to analyze this poem with are biographical criticism and um, psychological criticism. Now, um, page 14 of our week one text states that biographical criticism focuses on the particular life of the author. So what I did was I did a little outside research on the author and uh, the new Georgia Encyclopedia Online gives the most detailed biography that I could find. And uh, just to briefly summarize it for you, the Natasha was born to a white father and a black mother and at the age of six they divorced so she spent um, most of the time with her mother in Atlanta, Georgia, and her summers were spent uh, between her father in New Orleans and her mother's family in Mississippi. So she was able to experience what it was like to be white when she was with her father and what it was like to be black when she was with her mother and her mother's family. And in this time period, which was, she was born in 1966, so um, at the age of six, so it was mid-70s on, is when she experienced um, kind of the racial segregation that was still present in the South during that time. Now, these experiences were not only difficult for her as a child, but they helped shape her writing. Um, she's able to write from either point of view as either a white woman or a black woman. And she's also able to write from both points of view at one time. So that would be a biracial woman. Um, let's see. Now, psycholo using psychological criticism, the uh, week one text on page 13 and 14 states that Psychological criticism has also proved fruitful in examining so-called stream of consciousness writing where we purportedly are entering into the mind of a literary works narrator. So um, that would be what I took this to be was the narrator is actually the author, Natasha, of the poem. And uh, secondary kind of... Uh, explanation of psychological criticism that I found useful was Dr. Christy Siegel's. She states that psychoanalytic criticism may focus on the effects of literature upon its readers. Now for this poem specifically, it helps to look at um, Jacques Lacan's model of the psyche, the real portion. It is an unattainable stage representing all that a person is not and does not have. Um, now, this poem tells of the author's struggles as a child and a young adult. It doesn't really focus on her as an adult to where she has matured and is able to um, know who she is and where she comes from. Um, the title, Flounder, refers to more than just the fish. Uh, the Oxford Dictionary defines flounder, one of the many definitions, as uh, struggle mentally, show or feel great confusion. So we'll enter into the mind of Flounder's narrator, um, who again I've said I think is Natasha herself. Um, she is the flounder. She is uh, one half black and one half white. As a whole, she is someone struggling to find her place in the world, being a black world or a white world, or both at the same time. And remember, I said this is her struggle as a child and a young adult. Now, specifically, we'll, we will look at a few pieces from the poem itself. The first stanza, lines three and four. You about as white as your dad, and you go and stay like that. Now here she feels like uh, her Aunt Sugar is making sure that she knows that physically she looks white and uh, that's how she'll be treated. Um, the third stanza, line 12, 
the sunspots and the shadows. Now, as a child, she sees things in uh, dark and light, black and white. That's how she interprets everything. So everywhere she looks, she can see each half of herself. She can see the sun and she can see shadows. So that would be the white and the black. Um, the fourth stanza lines 15 and 16. Now put that worm on your hook, throw it out and wait. Now I found this to mean that that she's the worm. She's putting herself out into society and she's waiting to see if anyone will accept her. Um, the sixth and seventh stanzas lines 23, 24, and 25. A flounder, she said, you can tell because one of its sides is black, the other side is white. Now it's obvious that um, she's speaking of herself her one half black, one half white, and uh, the struggle as the flounder that she is, and and that it's obvious her aunt is telling her that it's obvious that it's a flounder, that it's one half black, one half white. Um, the last part of the poem, the seventh stanza, lines twenty seven and twenty eight. I stood there watching that fish flip flop, switch sides with every jump. Now, I took this to mean that, again, as a child, she could only either be black or white. Um, she didn't know how to be both, so she struggled to be one, and then she struggled to be the other. Now, um, all that being said, I think that both the biographical and the psychological criticism should be used together to analyze this poem. I don't think you could get um, all that meaning from the psychological criticism without actually knowing her history, her personal history from the biographical standpoint. Um, I did get more of an analysis from the psychological criticism by kind of digging a little deeper into the poem, uh, but only because I knew her history. Um, I'd love to hear what everyone else thinks about my post, and I'd love to get some responses on what you think about the poem, please feel free to post a video.